Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I just got the probable cause affidavit. I thought, hey, let's do a read through and a react. So I haven't read this yet. Let's get into it. Let's flip over to exhibit A, statement of Brett Payne. Looks like the first paragraph is background information. So let's start with the second one. On November 13th, 2022, at approximately 4 p.m., Moscow Police Department, Sergeant Blaker and I responded to 1122 King Road, Moscow, Idaho, hereafter the King Road residence, to assist with scene security and processing of a crime scene associated with four homicides. Upon our arrival, the Idaho State Police, ISP forensic team, was on scene and was preparing to begin processing the scene. MPD officer Smith, one of the initial responding officers to the incident, advised he would walk me through the scene. OFC Smith and I entered the King Road residence through the bottom floor door on the north side of the building. OFC Smith and I then walked upstairs to the second floor. OSC Smith directed me down the hallway to the west bedroom on the second floor, which I later learned through Zana's dr driver's license and other personal belongings found in the room, was Zana Kernodal's. Hereafter, Kernodal room. Just before this room, there was a bathroom door on the south wall of the hallway. As I approached the room, I could see a body later identified as Kernodal's laying on the floor. Kernodal was deceased with wounds which appeared to have been caused by an edged weapon. Also in the room was a male, later identified as Ethan Chapin, hereafter Chapin. Chapin was also deceased with wounds later determined, parenthesis autopsy report provided by the Spokane County Medical Examiner redacted, dated December 15th, 2022, and parenthesis to be caused by sharp force injuries. I then followed OFC Smith upstairs to the third floor of the residence. The third floor consisted of two bedrooms and one bathroom. The bedroom on the west side of the floor was later determined to be Kaylee Gonsalves, hereafter Gonsalves's room. I later learned from review of Officer Nunez's body camera there was a dog in the room when Moscow police officers initially responded. The dog belonged to Gonsalves and her boy ex-boyfriend, Jack Decour. I found out from my interview with Jack Decour on November 13th, 2022, that he and Gonsalves shared the dog. OFC Smith then pointed out a small bathroom on the east side of the third floor. This bathroom shared a wall with Madison Mogan's hereafter Mogan bedroom, which was situated on the southeast corner of the third floor. As I entered this bedroom, I could see two females in the single bed in the room. Both Gonsalves and Mogan were deceased with visible stab wounds. I also noticed what appeared to be a tan leather knife sheath laying on the bed next to Mogan's right side when viewed from the door. The sheath was later processed and had a K-Bar, USMC, and the United States Marine Corps Eagle Globe and Anchor insignia stamped on the outside of it. The Idaho State Lab later located a single source of male DNA, parentheses, suspect profile, and parentheses, left on the button snap of the knife sheath. As part of the investigation, numerous interviews were conducted by the Moscow Police Department officers, Idaho State Police detectives, and FBI agents. Two of the interviews included BF and DM. Both BF and DM were inside the King Road residence at the time of the homicides and were roommates to the victims. BF's bedroom was located on the east side of the first floor of the King Road residence. Based on numerous interviews conducted by MPD officers, ISP detectives, and FBI agents, as well as my review of the evidence, I've learned the following. 
On the evening of November 12, 2022, Chapin and Kernodal are seen by BF at the Sigma Chi house on the University of Idaho campus at 735 Nes Pierce Drive from approximately 9 on November 12th to 1.45 a.m. on November 13th. BF also estimated that at approximately 1.45, Chapin and Kernodal returned to the King Road residence. BF also stated that Chapin did not live at the King Road residence, but was a guest of Kernodal. Gonsalves and Mogan were at a local bar, the Corner Club, at 202 North Main Street in Moscow. Gonsalves and Mogan can be seen on the video footage provided by the Corner Club between 10 p.m. on November 12th and 1.30 a.m. on November 13th. At approximately 1.30 a.m., Gonsalves and Mogan can be seen on the video at a local food vendor called the Grub Truck at 318 South Main Street in downtown Moscow. The Grub Truck live streams video from their food truck on the streaming platform Twitch, which is available for public viewing on their website. This video was captured by law enforcement. A private party, redacted, reported that he provided a ride to Gonsalves and Mogan at approximately 1.56 from downtown Moscow in front of the Grub Truck to the King Road residence. DM and BF both made statements during the interviews that indicated the occupants of the King Road residence were at home by 2 a.m. and asleep or at least in their rooms by approximately 4 a.m. This is with the exception of Carnotal, who received a door dash order at the residence at approximately 4 a.m. Parentheses. Law enforcement identified the door dash delivery driver who reported this information, end quote. DM stated she originally went to sleep in her bedroom on the southeast side of the second floor. DM stated she was awoken at approximately 4 a.m. by what she stated sounded like Gonsalves playing with her dog in one of the upstairs bedrooms, which were located on the third floor. A short time later, DM said she heard who she thought was Gonsalves saying something to the effect of, there's someone here. A review of records obtained from a forensic download of Kernodal's phone showed this could have also been Kernodal, as her cellular phone indicated she was likely awake and using the TikTok app at approximately 4.12 a.m. DM stated she looked out of her bedroom but did not see anything when she heard the comment about someone being in the house. DM stated she opened her door a second time when she heard what she thought was crying coming from Kernodal's room. DM said she heard a male voice say something to the effect of, It's okay, I'm going to help you. At approximately 4.17 a.m., a security camera located at 1112 King Road, a residence immediately to the northwest of the 1122 King Road, picked up a distorted audio of what sounds like voices or a whimper followed by a loud thud. A dog can also be heard barking numerous times starting at 4.17 a.m. Security camera is less than 50 feet from the west wall of Kernodal's bedroom. DM stated she opened her door for the third time after she heard the crying and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking towards her. DM described the figure as 5'10 or taller, male, not very muscular, but athletically built with bushy eyebrows. The male walked past DM as she stood in a frozen shock phase. The male walked towards the back sliding glass door. DM locked herself in her room after seeing the male. DM did not state she recognized the male. This leads investigators to believe that the murderer left the scene. The combination of DM's statements to law enforcement, reviews of forensic downloads of records from BF and DM's phone, and video of a suspect video as described below leads investigators to believe the homicides occurred between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. During the processing of the crime scene, investigators found a latent shoe print. 
This was located during the second processing of the crime scene by the ISP forensic team by first using a presumptive test and then amino black, a protein stain that detects the presence of cellular material. The detected shoe print showed a diamond-shaped pattern similar to the pattern of a Vans type sole shoe just outside the door of DM's bedroom located on the second floor. This is consistent with DM's statement regarding the suspect's path of travel. As part of the investigation, an extensive search, commonly referred to in law enforcement as a video canvas, was conducted in the area of the King Road residence. This video canvas was to obtain any footage from the early morning hours of November 13, 2022 in the area of the King Road residence and surrounding neighborhoods in an effort to locate the suspects, or suspected vehicles traveling to or leaving from the King Road residence. This video canvas resulted in the collection of numerous surveillance videos in the area from both residential and business addresses. I have reviewed numerous videos that were collected and have had conversations with the other MPD officers, ISP detectives, and FBI agents that are similarly reviewing footage that was obtained. A review of camera footage indicating that a white sedan, hereafter suspect vehicle one, was observed traveling westbound in the 700 block of Indian Hills Drive in Moscow at approximately 3.26 a.m. and westbound on Steiner Avenue at Idaho State Highway 95 in Moscow at approximately 3.28 a.m. On this video, it appeared suspect vehicle one was not displaying a front license plate. A review of footage from multiple videos obtained from the King Road neighborhood showed multiple sightings of suspect vehicle one starting at 3.29 a.m. and ending at 4.20 a.m. These sightings show suspect vehicle one makes an initial three passes by the 1122 King Road residence and then leave via Walenta Drive. Based off of my experience as a patrol officer, this is a residential neighborhood with very limited number of vehicles that travel in the area during the early morning hours. Upon review of the video, there are only a few cars that enter and exit this area during this time frame. Suspect vehicle one can be seen entering the area a fourth time at approximately 4.04 a.m. It can be seen driving eastbound on King Road, stopping and turning around in front of 500 Queen Road, number 52, and then driving back westbound on King Road. When suspect vehicle one is in front of the King Road residence, it appeared to unsuccessfully attempt to park or turn around in the road. The vehicle then continued to the intersection of Queen Road and King Road where it can be seen, completing a three-point turn and then driving eastbound again on Queen Road. Suspect Vehicle 1 is next seen departing the area of the King Road residence at approximately 420 at a high rate of speed. Suspect Vehicle 1 is next observed traveling southbound on Walenta Drive. Based on my knowledge of the area and review of the camera footage in the neighborhood that does not show Suspect Vehicle 1 during that time frame, I believe that Suspect Vehicle 1 likely exited the neighborhood at the excuse me if I mispronounce this, Palaus River Drive and Conestoga Drive. Palaus River Drive is at the southern edge of Moscow and proceeds into Whitman County, Washington. Eventually, the road leads to Pullman, Washington. Pullman, Washington is approximately 10 miles from Moscow, Idaho. Both Pullman and Moscow are small college towns and people commonly travel back and forth between them. Law enforcement officers provided video footage of suspect vehicle 1 to forensic examiners with the Federal Bureau of Investigation that regularly utilized surveillance footage to identify the year, make, and model of an unknown vehicle that is observed by one or more cameras during the commission of a criminal offense. The forensic examiner has approximately 35 years of law enforcement experience with 12 years at the FBI. His specific training includes identifying unique characteristics of vehicles and he uses a database that gives visual clues of vehicles across states to identify differences between vehicles. After reviewing the numerous observations of suspect vehicle 1, 
The forensic examiner initially believed that suspect vehicle one was a 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra. Upon further review, he indicated it could also be a 2011 to 2016 Hyundai Elantra. As a result, investigators have been reviewing information on persons in possession of a vehicle that is a 2011 to 2016 white Hyundai Elantra. Investigators were given access to video footage on the Washington State University, WSU, campus located in Pullman, Washington. A review of that video indicated that at approximately 2.44 a.m. on November 13, 2022, a white sedan, which was consistent with the description of the white Elantra known as Suspect Vehicle 1, was observed on WSU surveillance cameras traveling north on Southeast Nevada Street at Northeast Stadium Way. At approximately 2.53 a.m., a white sedan, which is consistent with the description of the white Elantra known as Suspect Vehicle 1, was observed traveling southeast on Nevada Street in Pullman, Washington, towards State Road 270. State Road 270 connects Pullman, Washington to Moscow, Idaho. This camera footage from Pullman, Washington was provided to the same FBI forensic examiner. The forensic examiner identified the vehicle observed in Pullman, Washington as being a 2014-2016 to 2016 Hyundai Elantra. At approximately 5.25 a.m., a white sedan, which was consistent with the description of suspect vehicle 1, was observed on five cameras in Pullman, Washington, and on WSU campus cameras. The first camera that recorded the white sedan was located at 13 100 Johnson Road in Pullman. The white sedan was observed traveling northbound on Johnson Road. Johnson Road leads directly back to West Palouse River Drive in Moscow, which intersects with Conestoga Drive. The white sedan was then observed turning north on Bishop Boulevard and northwest on State Road 270. At approximately 527, the white Elantra was observed on cameras traveling northbound on Stadium Way at Nevada Street, Stadium Way at Grimes Way, Stadium Drive at Wilson Road, and Stadium Way at Cougar Way. The exhibit also includes a picture, says depiction showing Moscow and Pullman, and it has some, looks like highlighted dots on it. It's hard to read on this imager post, but then it shows a depiction showing the white Elantra's path of travel. It wasn't to scale. It has a legend and such. Let's see if I can pop that up on the screen. On November 25th, 2022, MPD asked area law enforcement agencies to be on the lookout for white Hyundai Elantras in the area. On November 29th, 2022, at approximately 12.28 a.m., Washington State University Police Officer Daniel Tiango queried white Elantras registered at Washington State University. As a result of that query, he located a 2015 white Elantra with the Pennsylvania license plate LFZ8649. This vehicle was registered to Brian Koberger, hereafter Koberger, residing at 1630 Northeast Valley Road, Apartment 201, Pullman, Washington. 1630 Northeast Valley Road is approximately three quarters of a mile from the intersection of Stadium Way and Cougar Way, last camera location that picked up the white Elantra. That same day, at approximately 12.58 a.m., WSU officer Curtis Whitman was looking for white Hyundai Elantras and located a 2015 white Hyundai Elantra at 1630 Northeast Valley Road in Pullman in the parking lot. 1630 North Valley Road is an apartment complex that houses WSU students. Officer Whitman also ran the car and it returned to Coburger with a Washington tag. I reviewed Coburger's Washington State driver's license information and photograph. This license indicates that Koberger is a white male with a height of six feet and weighs 185 pounds. Additionally, the photograph of Koberger shows that he has bushy eyebrows. Koberger's physical description is consistent with the description of the male DM saw inside the King Road residence on November 13th. 
further investigation, including a review of the Leita County Sheriff's Deputy CPL Duke's body cam and reports showed that on August 21st, 2022, Brian Koberger was detained as part of a traffic stop that occurred in Moscow, Idaho by CPL Duke. At the time, Koberger, who was the sole occupant, was driving a white 2015 Hyundai Elantra with the Pennsylvania plate LFZ8649, which was set to expire on November 30th, 2022. During the stop, which was recorded via a law enforcement body camera, Koberger provided his phone number as redacted. Here and after the 8456 phone, those are the last four digits of his number, by the way, they've redacted the ANI and the NNX from the telephone number. So you get 8456 phone as his cellular telephone number. Investigators conducted electronic database queries and learned that the 8456 phone is a number issued by AT&T. On October 14th, 2022, Brian Koberger was detained as part of a traffic stop by a WSU police officer. Upon review of that body cam and report of the stop, Koberger was the sole occupant and was driving a white 2015 Hyundai Elantra with the Pennsylvania plate LFC 8649. On November 18, 2022, according to Washington State Licensing, Koberger registered the 2015 White Elantra with Washington and later received a Washington plate CBF-8708. Prior to this date, the 2015 White Elantra was registered in Pennsylvania, which does not require a front license plate to be displayed. Parentheses, this was learned through communications with a Pennsylvania officer who is currently certified in the state of Pennsylvania, end quote. Based on my own experience and communication with Washington law enforcement, I know that Idaho and Washington require front and back license plates to be displayed. Investigators believe that Koberger is still driving the 2015 White Elantra because his vehicle was captured on December 13, 2022 by license plate reader in Loma, Colorado. Parentheses, information provided by a query to a database, and parentheses. Koberger's Elantra was then queried on December 15, 2022 by law enforcement in Hancock County, Indiana. On December 16, 2022, at approximately 2.26 p.m., surveillance video showed Koberger's Elantra in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. The sole occupant of the vehicle was a white male whose description was consistent with Koberger. Koberger has family in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. Parentheses, learn through a TLO search and locate tool database query. And parentheses. Based on information provided on the WSU website, Koberger is currently a PhD student in criminology at Washington State University. Pursuant to records provided by a member of the interview panel for Pullman Police Department, we learned that Koberger's past education included undergraduate degrees in psychology and cloud-based forensics. These records also showed Koberger wrote an essay when he applied for an internship with the Pullman Police Department in the fall of 2022. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm flabbergasted at some of this. Koberger wrote in his essay, he had an interest in assisting rural law enforcement agencies with how to better collect and analyze technological data in public safety operations. Koberger also posted a Reddit survey, which can be found by an open source internet search. Hey guys, I got that up on my channel, so go check my previous videos. The survey asked for participants to provide information to, quote, understand how emotions and psychological traits influence decision making when committing a crime, end quote. As part of this investigation, law enforcement obtained search warrants to determine cellular devices that utilize cellular towers in close proximity to the King Road residence on November 13, 2022, between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. 
after determining that Koberger was associated to both the 2015 white Elantra and the 8458 phone, investigators reviewed these search warrant returns. A query of the 8458 phone in these returns did not show the 8458 phone utilizing cellular tower resources in close proximity to the King Road residence between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Based on my training, experience, and conversations with law enforcement officers that specialize in the utilization of t cellular telephone records as part of an investigation, individuals can either leave their cellular telephone at a different location before committing a crime or turn their cellular telephone off prior to going to a location to commit a crime. This is done by subjects in an effort to avoid alerting law enforcement that a cellular device associated with them was used in a particular area where a crime is committed. I also know that on numerous occasions, subjects will surveil an area where they intend to commit a crime prior to the date of the crime. Depending on the circumstances, this could be done a few days before or several months prior to the commission of a crime. During these types of surveillance, it is possible that an individual would not leave their cellular telephone at a separate location or turn it off since they do not plan to commit the offense on that particular day. On December 23rd, 2022, I applied for and was granted a search warrant for historical phone records between November 12th, 2022 at 12 a.m. and November 14th at 12 a.m. for the 8458 phone held by the phone provider AT&T approximately 24 hours preceding and following the times of the homicides. On December 23rd, 2022, pursuant to that search warrant, I received records for the 8458 phone from AT&T. These records indicated that the 8458 phone is subscribed to Brian Koberger at an address in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, and the account has been opened since June 23rd, 2022. These records also included historical cell site location information, CSLI, for the 8458 phone. After receiving this information, I consulted with an FBI special agent that is certified as a member of the Cellular Analysis Survey Team, that's known as CAST. Members of the CAST are certified with the FBI to provide expert testimony in the field of historical CSLI and are required to pass extensive training that includes both written and practical examinations prior to be certified with CAST, as well as the completion of yearly certification requirements. Additionally, the FBI CAST essay that I consulted with has over 15 years of federal law enforcement experience, which includes six years with the FBI. From information provided by CAST, I was able to determine estimated locations for the 8458 phone from November 12th, 2022 to November 13th, 22, the time period authorized by the court. On November 13th, 2022, at approximately 2.42 a.m., the 8458 phone was utilizing cellular resources that provide coverage to 1630 Northeast Valley Road, apartment G201, Pullman, Washington, here and after the Coburger residence. At approximately 2.47 a.m., the 8 Four five eight phone utilized cellular resources that provide coverage coverage southeast of the Coburger residence, consistent with the eight four five eight phone leaving the Coburger residence and traveling south through Pullman, Washington. This is consistent with the movement of the white Elantra. At approximately two forty seven a.m., the eight four five eight phone stops reporting to the network, which is consistent with either the phone being in an area without cellular coverage. The connection to the network is disabled, such as putting the phone in airplane mode, or that the phone is turned off. The 8458 phone does not report to the network again until approximately 4.48 a.m., at which time it is utilized cellular resources that provide coverage to the ID State Highway 95, south of Moscow, Idaho, near Blaine, Idaho, north of Genesee. 
between 4.50 a.m. and 5.26 a.m., the phone utilizes cellular resources that are consistent with the 8458 phone traveling south on ID State Highway 95 to Genesee, Idaho. Then traveling west towards Uniontown, Idaho, and then north back into Pullman, Washington. At approximately 5.30 a.m., the 8458 phone is utilizing resources that provide coverage to Pullman, Washington, and consistent with the phone traveling back to the Coburger residence. The 8458 phone's movements are consistent with the movements of the white Elantra that is observed traveling north on Stadium Drive at approximately 5.27 a.m. Based on a review of the 8458 phone's estimated locations and travel, the 8458 phone's travel is consistent with that of the white Elantra. Further review indicated that the 8458 phone utilized cellular resources on November 13, 2022 that are consistent with the 8458 phone leaving the area of the Coburger residence at approximately 9 a.m. and traveling to Moscow, Idaho. Specifically, the 8458 phone utilizes cellular resources that will provide coverage to the King Road residence between 9.12 a.m. and 9.21 a.m. The 8458 phone next utilizes cellular resources that are consistent with the 8458 phone traveling back to the area of the Coburger residence and arriving to the area at approximately 9.32 a.m. Below is a depiction, not to scale, of the possible route taken based off of cellular site locations, and they've included a picture here I'll put on the screen. Investigators found that the 8458 phone did connect to a cell phone tower that provides service to Moscow on November 14, 2022, but investigators do not believe that the 8458 phone was in Moscow on that date. The 8458 phone has not connected to any towers that provide service to Moscow since that date. Based on my training, experience, and the facts of the investigation thus far, I believe that Koberger, the user of the 8458 phone, was likely the driver of the white Elantra that is observed departing Pullman, Washington, and that this vehicle is likely suspect vehicle one. Additionally, the route of travel of the 8458 phone during the early morning hours of November 13, 2022, and the lack of the 8458 phone reporting to AT&T between 2.47 a.m. and 4.48 a.m. is consistent with Koberger attempting to conceal his location during the quadruple homicide that occurred at the King Road residence. On December 23rd, 2022, I was granted a search warrant for Koberger's historical CSLI from June 23rd, 2022 to current. Perspective location information and a pen register trap and trace on the 8458 phone to aid in efforts to determine if Koberger stalked any of the victims, in this case prior to the offense, conducted surveillance on the King Road residence, was in contact with any of the victim's associates before or after the alleged offense, any locations that may contain evidence of the murders that occurred on November 13, 2022, the location of the white Elantra registered to Koberger, as well as the location of Koberger. On December 23, 2022, pursuant to that search warrant, I received historical records for the 8458 phone from AT&T. From this time, the account was opened in June 2022. After consulting with CAST SA, I was able to determine estimated locations for the 8458 phone from June 2022 to present, the time period authorized by the court. The records for the 8458 phone show the 8458 phone utilizing cellular resources that provide coverage to the area of 1122 King Road on at least 12 occasions prior to November 13th, 2022. All of these occasions, except for one, occurred in the late evening and early morning hours of their respective days. One of these occasions, on August 21st, 2022, the 8458 phone utilized cellular resources providing coverage to the King Road residents from approximately 10.34 p.m. to 11.35 p.m. At approximately 11.37 p.m., Koberger was stopped by Leda County Sheriff's Deputy C.P.L. Duke, as mentioned above. 
the 8548 phone was utilizing cellular resources consistent with the location of the traffic stop during this time. Parentheses, Farm Road and Pullman Highway, and parentheses. Further analysis of the cellular data provided showed the 8458 phone utilized cellular resources on November 13th, 2022, consistent with the phone traveling from Pullman, Washington to Lewiston, Idaho via U.S. Highway 195. At approximately 1236 p.m., the 8458 phone utilized cellular resources that would provide coverage to Kate's Cup of Joe coffee stand located at 810 Port Drive, Clarkston, Washington. Surveillance footage from the U.S. Chef Store located at 820 Port Drive, Clarkston, Washington and adjacent to Kate's Cup of Joe showed a white Elantra consistent with suspect vehicle one drive past Kate's Cup of Joe at a time consistent with the cellular data from the 8548 phone. At approximately 12.46 p.m., the 8458 phone then utilized cellular data in the area of Albertson's Grocery Store at 400 Bridge Street in Clarkston, Washington. Surveillance footage obtained from the Albertson showed Koberger exit the white Elantra consistent with the suspect vehicle 1. At approximately 12.49 p.m., interior surveillance cameras showed Koberger walk through the store, purchase unknown items at the checkout, and leave at approximately 1.04 p.m. Koberger's possible path of travel is depicted below, not to scale. They've included a photo. Additional analysis of the records for the 8458 phone indicated that between approximately 5.32 p.m. and 5.36 p.m., the 8458 phone utilized cellular resources that provide coverage to Johnston, Idaho, the 8458 phone then stops reporting to the network from approximately 5.36 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. That is consistent with the 8458 phone being in the area that the 8458 phone traveled in the hours immediately following the suspected time the homicides occurred. On November 27, 2022, Pennsylvania agents recovered the trash from the Koberger family residence located in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. That evidence was sent to the Idaho State Lab for testing. On December 28, 2022, the Idaho State Lab reported that a DNA profile obtained from the trash and the DNA profile obtained from the sheath identified a male as not being excluded as the biological father of suspect profile. At, at least 99.9998% of the male population would be expected to be excluded from the possibility of being the suspect's biological father. So there was a link DNA wise to the DNA left on that sheath and the DNA that was at the Kohlberger residence trash. Based upon the above information, I'm requesting an arrest warrant be issued for Brian C. Koberger, date of birth, November 21st, 1994, for burglary at 1122 King Street, in Moscow, Idaho, and four counts of murder in the first degree for the murders of Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. I declare under penalty of perjury to the law of the state of Idaho that the foregoing is true and correct. It was signed, dated November 29, 22, and the affiant signed it. Can I react now? Okay, this is crazy. First of all, he was not as smart as everyone is talking about. He went in there, he allegedly committed this murder, leaving a sheath, his K-bar sheath with his DNA on the sheath. So there you go. DNA was right there. It's not DNA that someone could say, oh, well, you know, maybe somebody partying in the house left it. No, it was left on the sheath. So this is the probable cause affidavit. What that tells me is they only have to give you enough to give you probable cause. He could also have left DNA all over that house, but they're not going to put that all in the probable cause affidavit. They can say, hey, it's here on something that murdered these victims. The sheath that went with this missing knife has got his DNA on it. Why, was it, why would his DNA be on this? You following me? So also, allegedly, he left a footprint with a, a Vans type shoe footprint right um, on the track on his track out of the house also he saw that one of the roommates downstairs 
So we have a potential witness identification, bushy eyebrows. Also, his phone's pinging away around them, around their house and around the dates of the day before, day after the murders, pinging away before. And he's turned the phone off right during the time that the murders have occurred and then he turns it right back on again. Dumb, dumb, dumb and dee, dumb, dumb. This guy, what did he learn in his criminal justice and classes? Please tell me. Please tell me what this guy learned, leaving DNA on part of what could be used as the murder weapon, leaving a footprint, leaving, letting his car be seen all over the place, stalking him, stalking him multiple times in the, in certain days in that car, allegedly, and getting that car seen going around and around and around in a neighborhood doesn't get a lot of activity at that time of night. Dumb. This guy is not a genius. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> refuse to believe it. Uh, what else? I mean, I'm just, I'm gobsmacked by this. I do totally understand why they did not want this released. They did not want this probable cause affidavit released. And this is totally clear why. I'm also, I, I'm probably going to annoy some viewers, but I'm glad that, that they've uh, put a gag order on this because I want him to get a fair trial and that's, and that's that you know, slap your hands together, knock the dirt off your feet and walk away because I don't want this turkey to get out because of publicity that's gone crazy, you know, and tainted an entire jury pool. So that's my hot take. I'll, I'll have more when I look at this again, but you know, I just, just read this. So there you go. That's my hot take. Please leave your comments in the comment section below.